heard somebody say it's hot. Man, you should turn it down a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Turn me up. Mm -hmm. so How y'all doing tonight? Good. 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 How's your faith? Strong. Good. 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 I think your mic's off, right? Mic's green. Okay. Mic's on. There you go. Yep. 2019, has it been a good year for you? No. Amen. Yep. I'm really tired of being here, to be honest with you. I want to go home. Amen. I'm tired of this old world. There's nothing here. Um, you know... The Jewish people, <coughs> us, when we much never listened to the prophets, you know, even the days of old, they didn't listen. You know, I think if anything, if we should have any resolutions this year, it might have ought to be uh, to listen, to listen to what God has given us. You know, but the, the problem with many of us is we're so filled up with what we think we know. Amen. We lean on our own understanding. Amen. And here is the problem. And that's why many of us don't learn. And the simple illustration is you just look at a child and how quickly <coughs> child, children learn. Why do they learn so fast? Because they don't believe they know anything. The Bible says you know nothing right. as you ought to know it. So I think... Uh, a real good thing for 2020 for us ought to be to be in agreement with God. What do you think about that? Amen. And God says, And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in Jehovah your God. So shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Amen. That's 2 Chronicles 2020. Would anybody like to give a praise tonight? I think uh, Miss Deborah's grabbed the mic. <coughs> Miss Janice has a praise. Well, since I drive all the time, I'm always thankful when the Lord gets me home. <laughs> to praise God that we all made it to 2020 and tonight I've seen a lot of people that old friends that I haven't seen in a long time and uh, I'm thankful for that and I'm thankful that we have Charles Hogger Brooks with us tonight we're blessed by that but um, I'm just I'm just blessed that we're all together here tonight and that we're in the beginning of 2020. Amen? Amen. Anybody else? I would like to send a praise to this church. I lived in the area and passed by and saw your sign. I lived in Georgetown and I just walked over and what a blessing to be with all you beautiful people and hear this beautiful music. So praise to the Lord that he brought me that I could share this evening with you. My husband passed recently and I'm going through a very bad time. And I'm so happy to be, my church home isn't, we, we don't have a service tonight. But you put it on your marquee. And thank you for that because it's so nice to be here with you. What's your name, sister? Welcome. My friends call me Dallas. Dallas, thank you for you for praising the Lord. That's beautiful. Thank you for putting that on your, your thing. Yeah. I could see it. Bless you, sister. Anybody else? Want to give praise to God? There will be plenty of things to give praise to God about. Go ahead, Jim. I'm going to praise God because uh, I was over in Israel two or three weeks ago and I got to be baptized in the Jordan. Amen. That's precious. I want to thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, what a, what a wonderful gift that, um, that Jesus would make himself an embryo and allow God to 
put himself inside Mary. And he put on this flesh like you and I have. Mm -hmm. The same flesh. And he conquered sin, death, and the devil. Mm -hmm. And he wears this flesh for eternity. Mm -hmm. he, he's, he's recognized with us. This, this planet that's been quarantined, this, this sin experiment, if you will, this terrifying. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine what the other world's just, I mean, it's got to be pitiful. But one day, this thing's going to end. Mm -hmm. And this is what the whole beautiful thing is. God's waiting for a people. It isn't God's will that we still be here Amen. with his sin. I, I hear it all the time. Well, how can God be with his people? Well, oh, look at this church shooting the other day. You know? I mean, how can God be the God if he lets this stuff happen? You know, it isn't his will that this stuff happen. This is sin. Sin has got to play itself out. It, it would finally... There's no more sympathy for the devil in the hearts of God's people. This thing's going to wrap up quick. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're going to go home. Because, you know, the, the, most of the evangelical world is thinking that we're waiting for God. God is waiting for us. Amen. When we get the right perspective, this 2020 vision in, in 2020, <laughs> maybe we can get it together and really be God's people and love one another. You know what? And lift your brother up instead of stepping on him. You know? We're, we all got struggles. I don't care. Some people are real easy to see the struggles, and some people, they hide it real well. But I tell you what, we're all fighting something. Ray, you were talking about, we we're going to have prayer requests as well. You um, shared with me that um, your wife is not here tonight because there's uh, medical emergencies in your family. We are going to share some prayer requests. Would you share that one, please? Yeah, my wife's um, stepfather, he's, he's got uh, COPD and uh, congestive heart failure. Obviously, because he can't breathe, he can't move. The human body's made to move. And if we stop moving, we just gel up, you know, get pneumonia, and you just pass on. And this is the problem. And he's been a smoker since he was uh, 10, 11 years old. And uh, by the grace of God, he's finally decided that this, you know, this episode that he had, and I don't even want to give you the illustration because it's pretty heavy duty. He's decided that um, he's going to quit. He's going to stop. And I praise the Lord for that. And he's even talking about coming to church. And he hasn't been to church since he was a kid. Praise the Lord. So that's a beautiful thing. And I, I hope that all comes to fruition. Right? Because, you know, I tell him all the time that the Lord loves him. And, it's working. Yeah. God sometimes has to give us a healing crisis before he can give us a healing. Is there anybody else? You're conducting this service, so ask for the prayer request. Okay. Anybody else have any prayer requests, or would you like to? Yeah. I just want to thank God that he came and took human form, and that we might live throughout eternity with him. Because he gave his life on Calvary's cross that I might live. You tell it, brother. Well, this is our last night in this church for a while, and I just want to uh, praise God for us finding this church and having a place to worship with like minded believers the month that we were here. And God bless you all. We're going to miss you guys. Trust me, you're like family. I mean, just the short time you've been here, we love you. Brother I'd like to share this with you. This is how God has worked in my life um, <laughs> in 2019. Um, I've owned my own company for over 30 years. And so I've contracted for a hospital that long. They changed their whole accounts payable system. And so for us to continue with work, we have to generate income and get paid on a regular basis. So they went from being able to pay me in 10 days at the most to stretch to 30 days, then it was going to 60 days, and then it was going to pass that. So it drove me to the point of bankruptcy. And I was talking to my boss about this, and there was nothing she could do because, again, this was uh, implemented system-wide. So I talked with her, made a passing comment probably two months ago that at some point, I may have to come to work for you guys. So about probably three weeks ago, she calls me and says, we're opening a position. 
Now, I used to work for the hospital in 1988. When I got that job, it took them over 30 days from the time I interviewed and they told me I had the job to actually go to work for them because of all their paperwork stuff. <clears throat> My boss called me and told me that day we're opening a position. She opened it up. She called me. She offered me the job. They gave me the job and all this happened in an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> that does not happen before a hospital. <laughs> so God was able to take all of this um, just not knowing what was going to happen. <laughs> and in an hour and 45 minute period, just change everything. Sister? Good night, everyone, and Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Year. I'm a visitor here, I'm with Pastor Gray and his wife from the Mary Seventh Adventist Church. I sat here and then I was thinking, I said, Am I going to be ungrateful or grateful not to say anything? I know sitting down it's okay, but when I look back to 2019, January 1st, until now, it's only God's grace. Amen. It's only God's grace. Sometimes we see people well-dressed. Welcome, smell good, but you don't know. We don't know what's going on in their lives. But God's grace never, never fail. Amen. Through all, sometimes I thought probably I will never make it halfway the year, half, halfway of the year, but God always said, I'm with you. Yes. Don't give up. God will strengthen me, will help me, because what happens is each one of us will be going through our own thing. Amen. Tests that will prepare us for the second coming of Christ. Yes. Tests that we will not have strength or power or energy to handle. But when we fall on our knees, we pray and pray and pray, God strengthen us. Yes. If I'm here today, it's none other. It's not my strength. It's not my power. It's not my will. But the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is as I visit this church tonight. If I never see you again on this part of this earth, let us make it together. So when Christ comes, we may all say, Lord, this is our God. He has waited for us. And we come to save us. Amen. This is my wish and my hope because this world, this world, as my brother said, there's nothing left. Nothing left except the hope of the second coming of Christ. May God strengthen you and strengthen me, and no matter what is going on, do not give up because Christ is coming soon. Amen. 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 I took a road trip in October with the main purpose of seeing people who were extremely old and, and um, not doing very well. And um, I do have a cousin um, in the Detroit area that has cancer. Her name is uh, <coughs> Debbie Walker. Uh, I just want to give praise to the Lord for my church family, my sisters and brothers in Christ. It just feels like home. Um, even in, uh, I go to, uh, to a Sunday church, the Great Outdoors Church, and there are wonderful Christians there. I, I don't feel that uh, everyone that's going to be in heaven, taken to heaven, will necessarily be Adventists. I think there are God's people in many churches. Amen. And I just thank the Lord for that. He's been like a husband to me <coughs> since I lost my husband, Dwayne. And uh, I just give him praise. Amen. And another praise, uh, our organist, Mildred Silvers, uh, who's been our organist in the Titusville Church for, uh, I bet it's been 40 years, Janice, maybe you know. 
Um, she was in a serious automobile accident. The car rolled three times, and uh, she uh, lost the use of her left hand. She was left-handed, so she wasn't able to play the organ anymore or drive her car. But now she's been going through rehab, and it looks like she will be able to drive and possibly even play again. So I just praise the Lord for that because it was such a serious accident that we were fearful that she was going to lose her life. Mm -hmm. But he saved her. Yes. She actually visited us last week. Uh, yeah. Yes. yes. Absolutely. We want to praise the Lord for um, healed relationships. If you had some relationships that were tough this year, would you raise your hand? And is God healing them? Mm -hmm. Amen. We're going to pray for that. Ray, you're going to lead us in a, a, a prayer. I want to praise the Lord for one of you. I don't know who. Uh, I pray for my children and my family all the time. And I always pray for that one person that's going to come into their life and lead them to Christ. Because as their father and grandfather, that doesn't seem to be able to uh, happen. So, when, whichever one of you that is that meets one of my children, please remember that I'm praying for you. I'm reminding of the words of a song that says every day with Jesus is better than the day before. And every year with Jesus is better than the year before. And this year has been a year of miracles for our family. It would take me all night just to mention everything that God has done for us. But I thank him because his promises are true. And I thank him because in spite of our sinful condition. He loves us so much. And I love Great is Thy Faithfulness, the hymn that we sang, because it's so true. God is faithful. And His grace is just, there are not even words to describe it. But I long for that day when I can see Jesus face to face and thank Him for what He has done in my life and what He continues to do. And my prayer tonight is that each one of us will be together at Jesus' feet, praising Him, just glorifying Him for what He has done for us. Amen. Amen. Right behind you, Minerva. Minerva. Yes, I, I want to um, piggyback on what you said about healing relationships. I lost my sister two years ago, and it was very hard for all of us. Her eldest daughter kind of separated from us. And We've had a hard time just communicating with her, but I, I started to pray for my own relationship with her, but also for the pain I knew my sister had before she died. And so I would call her, she would respond, I would text, she would respond. Mm. But the Friday after Thanksgiving, Charles and I were on our way on a trip and she called. I was in the airport, we could hardly hear each other. I knew at that point that God had broken her. And she said, Auntie, I, I'm so thankful for you. And I have a secret I want to share with you. You can't tell it to anybody. And I've been holding this for weeks now. It's about to kill me. But I, I just want to say that in Luke 18, 1, Jesus says, men ought always to pray and not faint. And I want to continue to not be unconscious in front of God because there are family members that are just hanging by a thread and they just need a word of encouragement from us, a, a hug of love, some concern. And I don't know where God is going to take it. So my bottom line tonight, I'm asking you all to pray for her. I'm going to give you her name. I want you to write it down. Her name is Nikkei Patton. N-I-K-A-Y P-A-T-T-E-N On the verge of 2020, this is a soul that's got to be saved. And I know all prayers can do it and I, I hope that you could do that for the Kingdom of Heaven. Praise the Lord. Ray, do we have any unspoken requests before you lead us in prayer? 
we, we could do this online, but we're not. We're, but we're not going to. <laughs> Okay, if you might get a spirit of prayer. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to kneel down before you this day. We're finishing off the year of 2019 and beginning another year on this planet. We know it's not your will that we be here. And I pray that you would open our eyes in such a way that we would be able to look into your eyes and see who we truly are that we might give us, give you our will, that your will would be done inside of us, that we would move as one, like the army of God, and vindicate your name, finish this work that we might go home. There's many people suffering. There's people, I believe that anybody honest at heart that's seeking you, Lord, will be in the kingdom. Your wonderful Bible tells us that people don't even know your scars will be in heaven. We need you this day, and there's some special prayer requests. Debbie Walker with cancer, and Nikki Patton for salvation, and so many of the unspoken requests that are here before us. I just pray that your Holy Spirit would move upon this place as we continue this, this little meeting together, that your name would be vindicated that your, your Holy Spirit would not just be amongst us, but would move us inside. Lord, we need you more than we want you. I pray that in 2020, you would make that turn around. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, as we've spoken about, we've entered into 2020, and I know that uh, there are going to be a lot of people making remarks about the vision in 2020, and my vision for this year is Christ coming back and the eradication of sin throughout the world. Amen. And my resolution, which I hope is your resolution also, is to say, stay focused on Christ. Amen. Tonight, I'd like to welcome our friend Charles Huggerbrooks. And I've been coming to this church now for eight years. And a long time, John. And John, uh, you mean a lot to me. But uh, I don't know how many years Charles has been coming here. Charles, how long have you been coming here? A long say time. Seven years, at least. At least seven years. Well, okay. So uh, we are blessed to have Charles here, and we are blessed by his voice and by his testimony. And at this time, I'd like to ask the deacons to come up. We're going to collect a love offering and. I just want to wish everyone a happy 2020. Amen. Yeah. 